Hi, everybody. My name is Vicki Parsons. I'm Stephanie Albrecht. Uh, and we are here today because it's our favorite season of the year and we have something we both enjoy doing very much. And so we're going to share that with you. We both love pumpkins and eating pumpkin seeds and carving pumpkins, roasting pumpkin seeds. Um, it's one of my favorite snacks. And so we're going to show you um, how to get the seeds out and play with all the goop and make some yummy pumpkin seed recipes. Exactly. And we're coming to you from our separate kitchens. So we'll see how this works. We both have different recipes um, to give you a little variety. And, and these recipes are available for you to follow online as well. So uh, we're going to jump right in. Before I get started, I'm going to turn on my oven. So that's one of the first things you'll have to do is preheat the oven um, to 250, right? Or 350? 250. 250. We're doing 250. I'm going to do the same thing. And then um, you'll want some tools. So I usually like to, I make a lot of mess when I do this. So you're going to want a knife, a nice chef's knife or something. Be careful, safety first, but you're going to want something to carve through this thick pumpkin. Um, I like to put down something on my surface because it makes a mess and it makes for easier cleanup. So I've actually just cut up some trash bags and put it over the kitchen island. Um, I don't mind cleaning up a mess. So I... <laughs> Just covered my, I washed my kitchen counter and then covered it with a clean towel just to get all the goop that um, I'll take outside and shake off and then wash it. But either way, or you can just do this outside as well. Yes, if the weather's nice, highly recommend doing it outside. It's a lot of fun. And then it's just back in nature where the pumpkin came from. <laughs> So as I said, we both have different recipes. We're going to get to carving right now because the first step is actually to take the head off or the top off There's our pumpkins and then get into the gooey part and start that part. Um, but we both have different recipes. We'll be sharing the seasoning, the spices with you when we get to that part. So the first step is to get our knives. Be careful, safety first, and carve the top off your pumpkin and it really you can carve it however you want you can make a little carving the bigger you make it the easier it is going to be to get in to get all the goo and the seeds out but think about the fact that you could also use this for a jack-o-lantern later on so right so we're not or at least i'm not planning on carving this one for jack-o-lantern so i'm gonna make my pretty big because i want to get in there all right this is the test of how good the knife is. <laughs> yeah, this is the hardest. This is the hardest part of getting pumpkin seeds is getting this top off and getting deep in there. Ooh. And this may take a couple hours, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I picked my pumpkin based on how heavy it was hoping that there's a lot of really good seeds in here to roast. So mine's a little bit shorter and fatter. <laughs> and I didn't give much thought at all to how I put my pumpkin. <laughs> I figured they had seeds of some kind on the inside and whatever I got would do. So you can see anything goes here, however you want to do it. Yeah. And of course, again, if you want to use this pumpkin for seeds and jack-o'-lantern, you obviously want to pick a shape that's going to work for your design. Okay, here we go. Whoop. I'm not close. <laughs> I think he's doing better. As again, mine is wider. <laughs> a little bit okay, bigger. Something about the smell of the inside of a pumpkin that just makes me very nostalgic. Um, yes. Um, this smells where, like fall. This is where you can just get all the pumpkin seeds out, which I'm going to wait for Stephanie. Cool. Get my hands in the goo. One of my favorite things is just the goo of the pumpkin. Oh, and a really important point, make sure you washed your hands before you got started so that um, as you're, because we'll get our hands, this is another fun part. You have kids. This is a great part for your kids to get involved in after you do the carving, is have your kids help put their hands in all that goo. They love it. Um, don't worry about it. They can wash their hands later. 
Yeah, it's all safe. Everything in here is edible. <laughs> it's fine. Ooh, so close. Look, there it goes. There we go, everyone. Look. Whew. So now is that sometimes the bigger the pumpkin, the fewer the seeds. Yeah. So, you know, it just really depends. But it you will get seeds. Um, so I have some leftover tools. It's just the things that you can get at the grocery store, or craft store or whatever, um, for carving pumpkins, those little kits that they sell. So I have this super goop scoop <laughs> that I'm using. And it also came with this, um, this is more for when you're actually going to carve the pumpkin. It's a scraper. So you can make sure you get everything off the sides, which is really important when you're going to be carving them and sticking them outside, but not so important today. So, so I also probably want bowls too. Yeah. Bowls and uh, something like a colander that you can do. So I'm just going to start by using a strong spoon and I'll get my hands inside in just a minute, but I'm going to get this, the lid, all the seeds out of the lid and scrape out some of this stuff as well. Um, the goal, ultimate goal is to separate all the goo, the meat, um, the pumpkin meat, separate all of that, all of that fibery stuff and separate it from the pumpkin seeds. So, Yes. We might each be doing it slightly differently, but I usually throw mine all into a thing of water. And that way, once it's in the water, it's easy to kind of separate out the, the goo. Um, and then you can also then dump it into the colander. And I'm just going for it with my fingers because I like how slimy it is. <laughs> so I'm actually um, separating the the goopy bits from the seeds. And I'm putting the goopy bits in a separate bowl because you can do stuff with that too. Okay, so my lid is pretty cleaned out. Um, and I am going to get another bowl for my goopy stuff. <laughs> I hope you're having fun with us. You know, one of the things, Whenever, and this is true of any holiday season, once you start um, baking cookies at holiday times or um, you have cinnamon mm. in the house, it brings back all kinds of memories. Um, and usually holiday memories usually are really fun. Things to think about when you were a child or you were younger and had little kids or before you were married or whatever, different experiences that you might have had uh, growing up. And at Halloween time, I can't think of very many people who didn't carve a pumpkin. But yeah. I have a lot of people who have never made roasted pumpkin seeds from the insides of their pumpkin. That's crazy. So, yeah, I know that's crazy because they are so good for you. And we'll talk about the, how good they are for you in just a few minutes. Um, because we, we want to stick with healthy things on our Eat Well channel, but uh, and pumpkin seeds are definitely going to be healthy for you. Yes. So I'm with Vicki. Now that this pumpkin's open and I can smell it, it just, it just, this is my favorite time of year. Halloween is one of my favorites favorite holidays to celebrate. I love the fall season, even though we live in Texas and don't always get the fall weather, but it's just that feeling of comfort and home. And yeah, there's a lot of memories about this time of year and family. And also what we're doing right now, that we're doing something together virtually knowing, you know, this is an okay way to spend time with family and friends and still have these experiences together. Um, even though we're apart. So some of you who have young children, a grandma or grandpa or Uncle Joe or whoever is in another state here in the city, this would be a great virtual activity for you to do with your children. Um, and just invite the grandparents or the uncles and aunts 
to join you virtually so they can enjoy and be a part of what you're doing as a family. Not only making pumpkin seeds, but also the carving of the pumpkin. Um, you can then do that for just about any holiday. So think about it, if you can't be together for the holiday, make sure you're together virtually. Look for ways to connect with people. I think it would be a really fun idea to get together with family or friends and come up with like a theme that you all carve pumpkins around so that way you're sharing in on that theme even though you're not sharing physical space right so you could do um you could do a disney theme or you could do a wild animal theme or you could do a deep sea theme oh what about an octopus has anybody ever done an octopus pumpkin? <laughs> i'm uh, sure just that seems difficult. Have fun with it. I have a question for you, Stephanie. What uh -huh. was growing up? What was your favorite Halloween costume that you wore? Oh, <laughs> my favorite was probably. So I know when I was really young, um, I had a nice homemade Minnie Mouse costume. So when I was growing up, my um, grandmother used to make a lot of costumes for me which was fun. Um, and I was really into Disney as well, as most kids my age were, um, and still are. <laughs> uh, so I had a lot of Disney themed costumes. Um, so the, when I was quite a bit younger, the Minnie Mouse one was my favorite. And then as I got a little bit older, I had a Belle costume from Beauty and the Beast. It was the, um, the blue dress that she wore, kind of her everyday dress with the apron. Um, and that my grandmother made for me, and that was my absolute favorite. I wore it several years in a row. It's kind of interesting how Disney has sort of been a part of every generation. So um, actually, when I, I remember my favorite costume was the year that Mary Poppins came out as a movie, uh, Mary Poppins the movie, which was such a favorite of mine. and. Um, I had a Mary Poppins with the whole, the carpet bag and an umbrella, <laughs> all that. So not really very scary, but uh, certainly I loved being Mary Poppins. Um, mm. Did you ever have a house in the neighborhood when you went trick or treating that you were afraid to go knock on the door? Um, no, not in my neighborhoods. Um, I've definitely done some of the haunted house things before, but not any that I remember being scared of trick or treating. There were definitely the houses that went all out though <laughs> that had all the decorations in the yard and i definitely remember some neighbors who they weren't scary but they they would invite you into their house not that's not the scary part <laughs> but that they had made their own sort of um like haunted house experience in their house so it wasn't just trick-or-treating coming to the front door you could walk through their house and it was a whole it's like being at a theme park okay um, yeah, so this year it might be a little bit different during Halloween because trick-or-treating is um, probably not the wisest activity, but we've heard one of our ballet instructors, Lucy uh, Record, she said, wouldn't it be a great idea if the kids all stood in the front yard with their costumes on and adults drove by through the neighborhood and threw candy at the kids? <laughs> That's Hopefully cool. not at them. <laughs> um, but then the, the kids could have people see their costumes and still get their candy. Also, this morning I went for a run and I saw several houses that were really de decorated. Mm -hmm. Maybe sort of like during the holiday season when we drive around neighborhoods and look at all the Christmas lights and all the holiday lights, you could do the same thing if you have neighborhoods that have Halloween decorations. So I was are, really, yeah. I was really excited when October 1st came and I've been taking morning walks to start my day in my neighborhood. And on October 1st, there were a handful of my neighbors that already had decorations on their front yard. And I was just like, these are my kind of people. <laughs> these are my people. They're okay. ready. So while Stephanie's still digging seeds, I am actually gonna get rid of some of the slime, pouring my pumpkin seeds. Mine separated really well from all the meat. So I am just going to pour that into the colander 
and sort of switch it around a little bit and make sure if there's any big chunks of insides, I pull that out. But I'm dealing with pretty much just seeds. And um, that's what you want to get. I'll show you that in just a second. I'm slow. <laughs> okay, maybe she had more seeds than I do. All right, so I don't know if you can see. So we're basically down to just slimy seeds. Um, <laughs> all the orange stuff is off, and that's not hard to get there once you once you get the seeds out of the pumpkin. Um, so when Stephanie is finished with getting her seeds out. I'll let her talk about what her recipe is, but we decided well, I to talk. You no. can still talk while you're digging. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, so I'm making a ranch seasoning. You could actually buy a ranch seasoning from the grocery store, but this is a recipe that I found that um, makes just the right uh, combination of spices and ingredients that sort of mimic what a ranch seasoning, spicy ranch seasoning might be like for pumpkin seed roasting. So I have um, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, <laughs> a lot, dill weed, sea salt, parsley, celery salt, mustard powder, and when I'm using olive oil, um, I actually really like to use melted butter, um, but I, I don't have any melted butter and I've made this with olive oil before as well and it makes for a, you know, kind of a healthy alternative. Are you using butter, Stephanie? I'm using butter. I am a big fan of butter. I am too. And, and actually, you know, contrary to what people tell you, uh, butter is not horrible, horrible for you. You just don't want to eat the whole stick. Right. And you want a, a nice butter that doesn't have any additional additives in it. So it's a, it's a really good source of fat um, as long as there's not like added sugars or too much extra salt or anything. So what is your recipe? So my recipe um, is actually something new. So I typically don't play around with flavors when I do my pumpkin seeds. I usually just roast with some oil and salt. So just, just the traditional salt is what I do. Um, but we wanted to do something different. I'm a big fan of sweet and savory mixes myself. So I, and spicy. So I'm going with a, a sweet and spicy mix. Um, so I am gonna use a little bit of melted butter in mine. And um, then I'm actually gonna sub in coconut sugar instead of brown sugar, so a little bit healthier option. Um, not so much sugar. And maybe a little coconutty flavor too, so that could be interesting. And um, also chili powder and ground cumin. So that's basically, and some salt. So that's basically it for mine. Yummy. That sounds good. You know, I don't know, but that's a thing, is all of you watching this today. I hope you'll try these recipes because we're going to eat all of ours. <laughs> yeah, we're not sharing. <laughs> we can't really share through the virtual platform, but we, um, we will enjoy them and hope that you'll try one or both of these recipes. While Stephanie is finishing up on that, I washed my seeds and drained them, but I like to pat them down and dry them out on some um, I'm rinsing mine out now, trying to get the last of the goop off. I don't have a ton of seeds. I don't have a ton either, but I think the bigger the pumpkin, probably. Um, but there's plenty. There's plenty. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Kind of drippy. A little drippy. <laughs> so that was that wasn't too messy, actually. 
You can use any sort of um, you know, cookie sheet would work as well. I like this because it's sturdy and you know how some pans sort of work when you put them in the oven. This one doesn't, so it stays flat, which I like that. Um, and you're going to, there's a few ways that people will do pumpkin seeds. I like to put my pumpkin seeds in the oven for a period of time just to get them dried out before I then take them out and add all the spice to it in the oil. Um, and then put them back in and roast again until they're nice and brown and yummy. Um, some people will just put all the seasoning on up front and put them in the oven. Either way is fine. You can experiment and explore what works best for you. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to pour my pumpkin seeds into, because I'm the type of person that likes to follow recipes very specifically. Um, because they go better for me that way. I'm gonna see how many cups of pumpkin seeds I actually have. I'm just curious. <laughs> and while she does that, I will tell you, that I know recipes, I sort of make it up as I go. I often will pull a recipe and then I'll think, oh, that would, add, that would sound really good with adding that in. Or I'll add a little, like, I love cinnamon. So if something calls for cinnamon, I usually double or triple the cinnamon. Um, or if something calls for garlic, I'll often put more garlic in. Uh, but uh, usually I'm pretty good about measuring stuff that's important. So if you need two pumpkin <laughs> seeds, then having something close to that is important. Or if you yeah. measure the flour or something like that. But um, how much do you have? I have one cup, which is good to know because my recipe actually calls for two cups. So now I know just half everything. Okay. Um, so we are did we decide today that we were going to put them in the oven first or just wait um i think i'm gonna just do all of mine at once and okay. see how that goes because that's new for me too so we're doing all the kind of new things so move this guy to the side put, put his hat back on properly Okay, so I'm going to measure out all my. Yes, same. Spices in this small bowl. Where did I put the measuring stuff? Let me make sure I have the right amount of everything. Um, okay. I'm making a lot of noise. <laughs> so I need um, to melt my butter a little bit. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use about one and a half tablespoons of unsalted butter. Oh, I have pumpkin in my hair. <laughs> Are we even playing with pumpkins if you don't get it all over you? <laughs> having hair in your pumpkin. I think it's probably good for your skin. <laughs> it's good for your tummy. Speaking of which, pumpkin is good dogs it helps settle their stomachs so I like to save some of the insides of my pumpkins for my furry kiddos okay. onion parsley So coconut sugar, chili powder, butter, cumin, and salt. And salt, always salt, right? There's always salt with seeds. Well, if you're gonna make nice and pumpkin seeds, and the saltiness is definitely part of what we like about it. Melt this a little bit more. So, my seeds in the bowl. Whoop. Every last seed in the bowl. No seeds go to waste. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Western, Spain, Bus, and Belize. Pepper. Okay. So brown sugar. So coconut sugar instead of brown sugar. My pups are coming over because they think that I have snacks for them. <laughs> hey, are you all still with us? <laughs> You can always fast forward. Yeah. Okay. I like to take my time in the kitchen. I'm not much of a cook. <laughs> in full disclosure, baking is probably more my thing, but still. I take a little bit longer than most people, and I'm okay with that because I kind of think this is my time. And it's okay if it takes a little longer. Okay. And I can already smell it. Oh, so you just put all of the oil or butter in the seasoning, um, at least with this recipe. We'll let the oven speak to you go. In a bowl and toss it, um, just like you would a tossed salad, um, just so it's nice and sort of evenly distributed. Um, And I'm actually, because this is a sweet and savory, and I know I added some coconut sugar, but when Vicki started talking about cinnamon, um, I really just felt like maybe I should add some cinnamon. <laughs> you followed recipes exactly, Stephanie. <laughs> you know, we're doing new things today. And it just sounded like a like a good idea. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got the melted butter in, I put in my salt, cumin, chili powder, and added a little sprinkle of cinnamon. Smells really good. I mean, cinnamon and butter, you guys, that is a great combination. And you know, you can always play with spice, spice level, depending on how spicy you want things to be. You can always add a little bit more chili powder, which I'm gonna do. Or pepper. Vicki, what are you doing? Spreading them out? I'm putting them in my pan. Um, I do like to have them pretty much flat across the bottom of the pan. I have a few more pumpkin seeds than I should probably, but it's fine. So I just covered the whole bottom of the pan and they're mostly on a single layer. I'll tell you what I like to do. So I followed the recipe which didn't call for salt, but because, and I don't put a lot of, I don't eat a lot of salty chips and stuff and I don't put food. We do watch our salt intake. But for these, I like to actually before I put it in the oven, just sprinkle a little bit of salt across the top of that, just because the pumpkin seeds. All right. So that wasn't too messy of a job. Right? Right. Easy cleaning. And now you have a pumpkin that is sort of halfway carved if you want to use it for a jack-o-lantern um, and I did not make any sort of a mess on my towel so I don't have much of a throwaway mess um, I always make a mess I always make a mess in the kitchen full disclosure <laughs> I 
Okay. <laughs> I don't go in the kitchen that much. My actually, my husband does most of the cooking at John. So extremely thankful for that. Um, and he cooks really very well since he retired. So yummy for me. Yummy. I like to make a mess, so I spread them all out with my hands. So now I gotta wash my hands. We'll be putting these into the oven and they will roast. We'll see how long it takes. Anywhere, I would say anywhere from 45 minutes, you kind of want to just keep checking them. Um, some recipes say 45 minutes. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, that's you. <laughs> some say an hour. There are some recipes we put in an hour and a half. I've never roasted them for an hour and a half, so we'll see. Um, all right, are we ready to? Ready. We're, I'm going to turn this and Oh, you can't see my oven because it's right here. But I'm going to put those things in there. Me and too. Now we wait. Now we wait. Set a timer. It's important. And make yeah. sure you're checking anyways. Because you yeah. don't want them to burn. And they can burn really easily. So well, you will start smelling them once they start roasting. OK. We wait. We'll be back. Okay. So while we're waiting for our pumpkin seeds to roast, we thought we'd share some of the um, healthy benefits of roasting and eating pumpkin seeds. So I'll start by saying they are super great when it comes to fiber. Um, and high fiber is always good to get into your diet. What's another one, Stephanie? So pumpkin seeds are also really high in magnesium and other minerals. So magnesium um, is really helpful for um, helping us improve our mood. It helps us sleep as well. Um, there's also iron, zinc, and copper in pumpkin seeds. Um, it just really help with like bone health. Um, minerals are always good for your skin as well, skin, hair, nail health, um, and also just helping oxygen get through your body, which is, you know, really important. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it's an antioxidant. It also, when you think about the different oils that you use, choose something healthy. So Stephanie used a healthy butter and I used a, um, an olive oil. Uh, so choose something that, because healthy fats are good for you as well. And people, a lot of people don't think about fats as being healthy, but they're actually really important to your diet. And so that's another thing that pumpkin seeds will have going for them. Just make sure you're choosing a healthier olive oil or a healthier butter. And we talked to, I know Boo talked about this in her recipe, which used um, avocados, which is another source of healthy fats. But one of the reasons why healthy fats are so good for us is because they help us feel satiated, which means full, um, a lot faster. So you don't have to eat as much to feel you know, full. And so as a great snack option, you know, you can eat a handful of these and feel good about yourself and not eat the entire container of them. One of the um, things about doing these things from home remotely is that we all have animals. And that was my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these dogs are, but they usually make an appearance once in a while. Too. They're sleeping, but they're close. <laughs> So those are just some of the healthy benefits. We will be sampling these things shortly um, and look forward to the finished product. Can't wait. We're back. Okay, we're back. And it's time to take out our uh, seeds out of the oven, right? Yeah. It's been about 40 minutes, I think. Hmm. So I can really smell the spices. They're nice and golden brown, and I, yeah, I can smell the paprika and garlic and just about, I had a lot of spices on mine, but mine's definitely a spicy, um, but I can't wait till they cool off a little bit and I can. Yeah, so spicy first, always pull something out of the oven with a mitt, it's hot. Mine smell a lot like the butter and cinnamon, but I also smell a little bit of that chili powder as well. Um, they're nice and kind of caramely looking actually, but ooh, it smells really good. 
Yeah. Okay. So now. Yeah. Yeah. So I probably, I added more salt onto those. I probably wouldn't do that next time, even though if you like salty foods, you'll like these. I'm just not used to eating a lot of salty food, so it does taste extra salty to me, but it's really yummy. You can taste all the, the spices. Um, I don't know that it really tastes like ranch so much, but it definitely has a, a yummy, yummy taste to it. So we have two options and the recipes are on the website. Yep, very good. So different options, a savory option, sweet and spicy option. And then you can make a little traditional face on your pumpkin. Yes. You know, like the traditional triangle pumpkin man and now he's got a candle in him. Um, so you can always try one of these recipes. You can go with just the old faithful. Some oil and salt is always a good option. Um, play around with it, whatever you want. Yeah, all right, well, thanks for joining us and let us know if you try any of the recipes or if you make up your own because we love pumpkin seeds and we'd love to know what you come up with. Yeah, so be sure to tag us on Instagram at Ballet Austin CTR, uh, hashtag eat well, and we'll repost that. You can also follow us on Facebook. All right, all right, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Happy carving. Bye. Bye.